All right, now what I'm gonna do now is actually take this out. We're gonna do our twist. I wanna cool that jelly roll off so that we can put it in the vise and it's not gonna store it in. I'm gonna come out of fire and I'm just gonna take the jelly roll and dip it down in the water and it'll turn black. All right, I'm gonna work the vise and the wrench while Jason comes to the vise with the hot piece. Now that we've cooled our jelly roll off, we're gonna put it in the vise, and Jason's gonna twist it. Of course, as we said before, you can see the scale coming off. That's about pretty enough. All right. Let me get this thing on. And then we can just use the vise to twist and straighten up a little bit. Next, what he's gonna do is heat it up in this spot right here, and we're gonna bend this piece over on top of itself, and this will create like a gap between the two pieces where it can give you a better hand grip. All right, back in the fire, Jason. All right, we're gonna come out and go with the vise. Pick up on it just a little. There you go. Bend it over in. All right. There's a handle. I'm gonna cool that down. And then I'll give you a demonstration. For a larger hand, that actually gives a little space to where you, you can have a comfortable grip instead of trying to hold a little bitty piece of quarter stop. It gives you a lot better control. All right, now we're gonna go back in the fire and work on drawing our end out so that we've got something to attach to our can. While we're heating that up, Jason, of course, you know, for, for those of y'all that don't know, we're coming to you from Tennessee. We are from Tennessee. We talk the way we talk. I've heard a lot of people, especially our internet viewers, talking about what in the world is a beanie weenie or biney sausage can. And for those of you who don't know, that's just a couple of snack foods it's, that we've got here in Tennessee. But basically all it is is either aluminum or tin can. Tin probably works better because it's, it's going to last a lot longer if you're getting it to the heat. And it's a little stouter. But it's any kind of just a, just a pre-formed can. Mm -hmm. Now you can get fancy, and we will be showing you later up an actual handmade ladle that you could use for a dipper. But just for the beginning blacksmith especially, just any kind of can. It may be a small soup can. Here in Tennessee, viney sausage or beanie weenie can. Could be a fruit cup, you know, uh, some type of uh, fruit. Another thing you could do, I've seen a lot of smiths do this, you can poke holes along this, along one side of it. And what that does is when you, when, you're, when you got your piece in there and you got water in it and you want to wet down your fire, it kind of acts like a shower instead of just dumping all the water at once. Uh, I'm sure you've a lot of you have seen a, a, a flower bucket or what you water your flowers with. It'll, it'll act the same way with a little bitty holes in it. There you go, Jay. Just to reiterate, we are Tennesseans. We're what some folks would call just old country boys. So if there's ever anything we do on the show that you don't understand, by all means, just you know, get on our website, drop us an email, and we'll be glad to explain it in more detail. Okay, so I'm gonna come out of the fire again and basically we're gonna draw it out the same as we did to start for a jelly roll.
Of course, after we lose the heat, we're just going to go ahead and heat it back up so we don't fold anything over. So we're going to come out again and continue drawing this out. Basically all we're trying to do is make the piece that's going to fold over our cup. Probably one more heat and we'll have this drawn out far enough, which we are working on a small, short dipper tonight, more or less just for uh, sake of the show so that you can actually see the handle and the dipper, which this is plenty long to work, work a fire with. We're going to bring this back out and finish drawing it out. And now we'll actually put a couple of bins in this so that we can actually put it down in the cup and crimp it to the cup or the can. Now we're going back in the fire. So now we're going to come back out of the fire and we're going to make a 90 degree bend, which I'm going to make a little bit of a Tension here first, then we're going to bend this over 90 degrees, come back over, Oops. got a little confused on what I said. Before we put this back in fire, we're actually going to do just a, a test fit. And that's just basically pushing this down to see if it's going to fit. And I'm going to try to line it up on the seam of the can, which should be a little stronger because it's actually crimped together anyway. So when we come out of the fire this time, what we'll do is get this set back up on our can, come over the horn, line this piece up right over the middle of the horn, then give it a couple of good blows to where it crimps real tight and holds the can. I think you're about hot enough there, Jay. All right, so now we're gonna bring this out and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get everything fit up and hold it over the anvil and then I'll let Jason actually beat this down for me. Line this up on our seam. Go right over the horn of the anvil. We're just going to cool this off now. And basically what you end up with is your little dipper that you can pour the water out with. 
So now what we're going to do is show you what Jason was talking about as far as controlling the fire. So you get your dipper full of water, and let's say we just put a piece in the fire, which naturally we work toward the center of the forge, and we want to control that heat. So you just paste, you just go and pour a little bit of water around the outside of the fire, which cools that coal off and focuses the heat right there in the center where your piece is at. And that's how simple that's what your dipper is used for. On today's tips, we're going to talk about different types of ball hardies and where to get them. This particular one is a shifter ball out of a five-speed transmission from a Jeep Wrangler. This one is a tie rod in off of a truck. This one is a tie rod in off of a car. As you can see, there are three different sizes, and here's how they fit in the anvil. This one from the Jeep has got a nice square shank. I didn't have to do anything to it and it fits perfect in my hardy hole. This middle size one, I didn't have to do anything to it either, and it fits perfect in the Pritchell hole. And this small one, it also fits in the Pritchell hole. And this has been today's Money Saving Tips. All right, folks, I hope y'all enjoyed today's show. Uh, we're going to rehash on what we've done. We showed you how to draw this out to make our jelly roll. We showed you how to twist it again. And we also showed you how to bend this over to, to form our handle. And then again, we showed you how to form this part to cut, crimp around our, our uh, can. So, Jason, let's show them what we're going to do on the next show. On our next show, we're going to make a shovel. And we're going to show you how, once again, to make a handle and how to make this shovel pan and rivet it to our handle. All right, folks, so we hope you enjoyed the show tonight, and we're looking forward to seeing you the next time on the Firefield Blacksmith Show. <laughs>